Namaste, Mother Nuggets! Welcome, Rangers, to another episode of RJ Messes Up the Rules 2 One Page Rules Skirmish. <laughs> Welcome! Age of Fantasy Skirmish. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I have fixed my tripod. I got like a really hardcore thingy, uh, hard metal plug in it now, so the ball drain is not broken. So hopefully, no more shaky cam today. Uh, we are just playing a small match. Look, I also got fancy lights. Ooh, lights. Uh, so hopefully things will, in theory, look a bit better. I'm hoping. Uh, let me know. I also looked up the rules that I didn't know. So, um, stunned people apparently reactivate after not activating for a turn. That's... Woo! And, um, I've learned about magic. Magic's pretty straightforward. I'm pretty sure I can handle magic. Uh, he says. <laughs> Watch me mess it up. Uh, but yeah, that's today. Let's get started. Uh, I don't have two cameras today. I'm just doing one. I've had a whole schmozzle with my phones. Um, but I'm going to stop talking. Let's look at the armies. They're the same as last time, but in case you missed the last video, let's go on with the show. Alrighty, that's already much less shaky. <laughs> I don't know how if it'll stay that way, but here we go. Uh, this is our goblins. Just like last time, we've got the goblin leader. He's quality five, defense five, tough three, hero tough three. He has a hand weapon. He's from the forest clan, which gives him strider, means he ignores terrain. Uh, and he's a shaman with caster two, and we will actually, um use his caster 2 things today. He has the Goblin Army spells, which are Spider's Might, uh, which targets four friendly units uh, with 18, within 18 inches get poisoned next time they fight in melee. That's pretty cool. Glare, one, uh, target enemy unit within six, takes one hit with deadly three. Nuisance, which is a bit harder to cast. Target four friendly units with 12 plus, and they get plus one to defense rolls next time they take hits. Death Shroud. Target an enemy unit within six inches takes two hits AP2. Sneaky. Target four friendly units within 12 get plus three inches next time they advance, or plus six if they rush and charge. Uh, and Curse three. Target an enemy unit with uh, in 18, takes one hit with Blast 3. That sounds pretty powerful. So that's his Shaman spells. We've got Warriors with their spears there. They've got three hand weapons. They've got a quality 5, defense 6. They are also Forest Clan and Strider. Uh, shooters. There's, they're, they're, so the Warriors and the Shooters are both like a, a group unit. Um, they have to stick together. Quality 5, defense 6 on the Shooters. Three hand weapons. They also have three short bows. Uh, and uh, they have an 18-inch range. And finally, Zorak the Troll, fan favorite. Regeneration, tough three, quality four, defense four, one heavy hand weapon, which has attack three. And they will be fighting the dwarves. Oh, too close. There we go. <laughs> they will be fighting the dwarves. Uh, and the dwarves have the dwarf champion, who is uh, quality three, defense four, toughness three, fearless hero slow, tough three. He has a hand weapon, which does three attacks. He's also a rune lord with caster two. Um, now, technically, this puts him over the points. I put the little blurb thing up on the last video. But you know what? We're just playing casual. doesn't matter. He's only a little bit. Uh, and that's just so we fill out so we have nice even points. The dwarf army spells are spirit rune. Target enemy within six inches takes one hit with AP2. Smiting rune target enemy with uh, within six inches takes two hits. Uh, battle rune uh, target enemy uh, target four friendly units within twelve inches get plus two next time they advance or plus four next time they rush or charge. That might be good so they can actually charge in instead of hop along. Uh, breaking rune target enemy model within nine inches takes one hit with AP four. That's pretty rough. Drill rune target four friendly units within 18 inches get flying next time they activate flying dwarves. Whoa, that's crazy. Uh, cleaving rune uh, target two enemy units within 12 inches take two hits each. So they're the spells, very offensive spells from the dwarves um, and some mobility, which they kind of need because they're pretty slow. <laughs> There's also now uh, two marksmen and two miners again, like last time, they're not. Um, they are not there, uh, like, you know, in a group. They are individual activations. So we have to make sure that we stay on top of that because that actually makes a difference. Uh, the marksmen, quality four, defense five, hand weapons, rifles with 18 inches. Uh, and the miners have ambush and slow. Uh, all of the army has slow, I should point out. Miners, quality four, defense five, explosive 12 inches, uh, attack one, AP one, and a pick, which is attack one, AP one as well. And then we have the three warriors, 
which have three hand weapons uh their quality four defense five and as we saw last time they have shield wall which is actually super useful um so yeah that is the dwarven army and today we're playing a bit of an interesting mission okay so today we are sort of continuing on the story from last time the goblins have sort of fled back to their swamp after getting sort of their their mana shards defended against they weren't able to corrupt them so they're back in the swamp of blood and they are sort of you know in the ruins where they live and they're kind of defending that um and so rather than it be kind of a, a grab for resources or whatever today today we are looking at uh it's going to be a uh, sort of king of the hill mission so this uh portal in the center there is i guess the 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 key the key to the whole ruins and it is going to be the the people who are controlling that at the end are the ones who kind of control uh whether or not there's going to be reinforcements coming for the goblins or whatever um you know or whether the goblins you know basically if, if the dwarves control it they'll destroy the portal so no big monsters can come if the goblins control it they'll they'll call some big monsters for the next game um to to kind of have that so whoever's in control of that at the end is the winner uh swamps count as difficult terrain and cover um the forests count as cover um these biggie trees they kind of have an elevation -y spot so you can see you, know, you can kind of climb up there the ruins um uh, will count as cover where they're broken elevated terrain where they're where they're not um you know get a bit of get a bit of cover there um and Yes, uh, that's basically it. You can also see that uh, we've got a deployment. So we've got uh, dwarves being the attackers, goblins being the defenders, and I've already gone through deployment. Um, we've got the archers up on the elevated position. They are not quite close enough yet to reach that. They're going to have to scoot forward. The troll is getting ready to, you know, wander around and, uh, you know, come in and, and smack some butt. The... Uh, the warriors and the you know the caster you know they're gonna they're there to charge up but um you know there could be a bit of a back and forth because you know there's some spells that are going to happen in this game so uh we'll see how that goes uh meanwhile the kings the dwarf kings got his warriors and they're charging in through the pass ready to go uh you know straight for the target and the shooters the marksmen have kind of taken up a position in cover so they can shoot out of the cover um but if they get shot at they'll um you know it, obviously there's there's meant to be more trees and things you know we're in a swamp whatever so it's just symbolic that that dark green line symbolizes where the cover starts um but they do have that swamp ground there that kind of is going to provide some some cover if they shoot through it as well um and the miners well just like last time the miners, they be digging. Uh, they'll turn up at a later turn. If it's your first time on the channel, uh, because we have such a small place, we play with centimeters rather than inches, and we measure center to center so that the base sizes aren't a problem with that. Uh, and without further ado, we will um, get started. And in fact, I might roll off. Uh, let's see who's going to go first look the dwarves are the attackers but we want to see who gets the initiative i just dropped that red dice let's grab another one whoever gets high is going to be the one who gets the first turn looks like the goblins are going to go first uh, i know that's not how you meant to do it but that's how we're doing it today welcome to the rj channel where the rules are made up and your time is important to us <laughs> that's how that goes right round one Alrighty, so the goblins first turn, they're going to move these goblins up closer so that they get a nice clean shot of the, uh, you know, the defensive area that they're meant to be defending. Uh, and then we're going to jump over to the, the dwarves where we're going to get our first spell of the game. We're going to activate the, the dwarven rune cast art. Now, apparently they've changed the rules for how spells work between the book that I have printed and how it works now on this sheet so that's yay <laughs> yay for rules that change i hate rules that change 
Ah, anyway, there you go. Um, if we're going to use that army builder, I guess we've got to use the new rules too. So, he's a caster 2, so he gets 2 spell tokens at the start of each round. Can't hold any more than 6 tokens at once. Uh, at any point before attacking, he may spend as many tokens as the spell's value to try casting the spell. So, he's going to do Battle Rune which uh, gives his friends the bonus to speed. It says target four friendly units. Well, you know, I, they're, they're technically a unit, but even if they're not, I'm going to do it on them and himself. I'm sure we can do that. I'm saying we can on this channel. Welcome to RJ Channel, where I decide that we're just going to do whatever we want. Uh, on a four plus, so he spends his two, he gets two, he spends it. Four plus, they get a bonus to, uh, bonus two to their advance or four to their rush or charge. Here we go. Ciao. We got a four, so they are fast dwarves for this turn. And that is his... Uh, can he move and cast a spell? Why not? It says he can cast a spell. So let's do that. So let's charge him up. So normally he'd be slow, uh, but we're going to give him plus four to his normal... He'd normally have like a eight advance, so he gets the normal speed. And he will go to there, leading the charge. And that is his activation. For the goblins activation, they have moved their troll from from this location to that location. It was probably a mistake to put him behind that swamp. Um, but there he is. He's uh, lo looking, looking large and in charge, facing down the king. And while we're here, we might as well move these, uh, these warriors up to be with the king. They're going to come in to try and... Oh, they've got to go around that swamp. Otherwise, they're going to have some dramas. Uh, they're going to come up here and whoops, take some trees with them. They do have axes, I guess. They're going to you know, lead the way to try and get close to that, uh, that portal, that objective that they are chasing. All right. So, we'll see what the goblins do next. Likewise, the goblins are going to... Whoop, Knock that over. Never mind. <laughs> the goblins are going to charge up. They're, they're, they're 12 or run up, rush, whatever rush is. Uh, and sort of face the... Get ready to face them. Lots of mustering about in combat here. Uh, but the, the caster is kind of hanging back here. Uh, but the goblins, they're getting ready to... If I had to position that better... Take on the Dwarvies! Uh, and that is their activation. In fact, while we're here, we can go ahead and say, uh, you know, the Dwarf Marksman uh, activates. He can't really shoot anyone. He needs 18 inches. He can't, can't quite reach them. He's a little bit too far away. Which brings us to... Oh no, my books are falling down. The uh, Spellcaster who he has got two. We might put a little marker here to say he's got two magic points this turn, which he's not going to spend just yet. And he is also going to advance or, or, or rush, whatever. Uh, he might just... He can normal move up. Or how close can he get? Mm, he can get quite close. He's going to rush to here. And uh, we'll, we'll keep his spell counter there with him. Uh, and that's his activation. Which then gives us the miner's activation. And that's it. That's the end of turn one. Uh, marksman, I should say. The marksman cannot reach any of them yet. So, that is the end of turn one. At the moment, the dwarves are almost controlling the... Uh, I mean, they're within three. The dwarves are controlling uh, the... The, the, that, that thing that is the thing. Turn two. We'll begin momentarily. Just so we can see the layout of the board here. Oh, I might step back even further. Uh, we got some goblins. We got some dwarves. We got turn two. And we are going to have our ambush friends come on to the table. Get that to focus. Our miners have come on to the table more than more than nine away from uh, the troll. They're gonna do a bit of ambushing, uh, sneaking up at the back uh, behind him there. 
Um, and that is what they're going to do at the start of turn two. Uh, so now all the players are on the board. Let's see who finished first last time. The goblins finished first. So the uh, does that mean the goblins go first again or the dwarf go first again? I'll have a look at that. And we will do that action in a minute. Okay, so... Oh, I don't even know if that's a good angle. Maybe I go up a bit. I might have to hold this one. <laughs> I don't know what to do with the goblins. So the goblins finished activating first last time. So they have to go first this time. Um, see those like individual marksmen and miners really make a difference, right? Um, but I don't know. They don't really want to go first. I guess that troll can get out of the way of those miners. That might be the way to go. But, and also putting the miners at the back was probably a mistake as well. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Um, I feel like... How close is he? Oh, his, his uh, spell points should go up. Actually, I know exactly what we're going to do. Alright, the spell points of the... This guy. What's his name? The the shaman go up to four, and whilst we're here, we better give some spell points to <coughs> our guy. Um, and so that means he's got enough now to do his fancy curse. Uh, he needs to spend three, and he might actually spend the extra one to get a plus one. So he's got no more points left. Uh, and so he's hitting on a three plus. The enemy unit within 18 inches. Oh, it's just one unit though, so we can't get the king. That's a bit frustrating. Uh, but with an 18, uh, takes one hit with blast three. Does it say what the... One hit with blast three. Ignores cover. After resolving other special rules, each hit is multiplied by X, where X is up to as many hits as the model in the target unit with three inches of it. Uh, it must split evenly between all enemies within three of the target. Now, they are all within three of each other, because they have to be. That's their rules. Um, oh, actually, yeah, that's how it works. So, that unit is within three of the hero unit. There we go. That's how we get them all. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. And... Yeah, so the damage has to get split. So if we hit, it takes one hit with blast three, which counts as three hits, I guess. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, so we need a three plus. Here we go. Oh, that's a bit wonky. Ugh. That's, that doesn't count. That was wonky. Let's put it up the back here. Oh, my God. Well, we got a four. So four is more than three. So, that hits, right? So, we've got three wounds to deal. And they have to be split evenly. So, do we go two and one? Or do we go one and two? Um, yeah. And I guess they get to defend, too. And they, they have shield wall. But does shield wall work against the spell? I don't think it does. Shield wall. Defense rolls that are not spells. Yeah, so... We are going to do, hmm, we do need to, we need to whittle this, uh, we need to whittle this dwarf runecaster down. He has three hit points. Let's do that. So we're going to do, oh no, and I rolled the wrong dice too. I was meant to roll the bad moon dice. That's, uh, you know, unfortunate. So here we go. Uh, we're going to do two, you know what? I'm going to put two on them and one on the dwarf. Um, just because that's going to reduce their number in total, right? I think we've got enough that can actually cause a problem. Uh, that's the way to do it. So, they have a defense of 5+, plus, so it becomes a 4+, plus because of... Sh oh, wait, it's spell, so no, 5+. plus. Uh, they make one, but not the other, so one of them is toast. Uh, oh, wait, he gets a wound... No, yeah, no, yes, because he's a thing. And then... Because they're a group. You kill the guys until there's one left. And then the king has a 4 plus defense. He would go. He probably could have spent a point. Uh, that's more than 4. So he does not take a wound. Could have spent a point to argue the argue the spell I guess. But 
I think we're happy with that result. Uh, we're not really happy, but there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the goblin's first activation. And um, now we're going to activate the miners, I think. One of the miners. All right. We are going to activate these miners. Now, I was about to rush and charge, um, but that is not what we're going to do. We're going to activate one of them. He's going to move his slow four up to there. Uh, and then he's going to shoot his explosive, which will definitely be within 12. So that is a quality four plus shot. Uh, one attack, AP1 if it hits, at uh, the oldie troll. So six whoop, is definitely um, a hit, right? Six is a hit. So um, the troll. AP1, uh, which it's a minus one to his defense roll. He has a defense of four plus. Uh, can he make it? He does not make it with that roll. See, I'm trying to roll in the camera, but it's not really, not a good spot. I've got too much terrain. That's my problem. Uh, but I love terrain, so who cares? So that's a fail, but he does have regeneration. So on a five plus, the wound is ignored. Oh, that was going to be a 6 too. So he takes a wound. ka -chow. Good thing he is tough. Let's give him a wound marker. Alright. We are going to activate the troll, actually. Uh, so that's good timing. And he's going to come down and try and charge the king. So he's got 12. Or oh, can he make the king? He can't make the king, but he can make that warrior. So he's going to charge the warrior. Uh, and have a swing. So, he has a quality of 4+, plus. he gets 3 attacks, uh, and they are also AP1, because they are heavy hand weapons. Here we go. Oh, look at those bad moons, baby! Again, I rolled in a good spot, but then the guy was in the way. <laughs> Whoops. So, all three of those hit on this, on this one warrior unit. Now, I don't know if the other warrior is meant to, like, scoot in or not, but, um... You know, what are you going to do? Defense. Uh, he has a 5 plus defense. So we'll roll his 5 plus defenses. Oh, uh, wait, it's going to be 6 plus because he's AP1 on those hits. Uh, okay, so one of them he saves, but the other two are toast. So this, this guy is dead as a unit, I guess. And so he has one wound marker on him. Uh, and we have to add the one wound to a dice roll. And depending upon what it is, depends on if he's dead or not. So one plus whatever we get. Uh, so that's going to be a three plus one is four. So he is stunned. Bloop, 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 bloop. We'll give him a, a wound marker as well if I can find one that's the correct color. Ow, I should have done the black ones as the magic and the green ones as the... As the thing! One wound marker. There we go. Happy days. Uh, and then my guy has to... And this is what I wasn't doing last time. He's got to move back a little bit. Uh, and that's how you don't have to worry about fighting into combat. Shooting into combat or whatever. Because there is no combat at the end of a combat. Yay, what a great rule. Let's find out whose turn it is next. Okay. So the dwarves now have to have a choice of activating... And unfortunately, the because uh, we go in center to center, thanks to our fancy centimeter rules, uh, the the troll is just out of shooting range. So this marksman might activate and have a little walk out of his out of his hovel and take a pot shot at this troll. Because I think this troll is going to become some big problems for the dwarves if they don't start dealing with it. So, he's got a uh, one attack, AP1 rifle, quality four. Let's see how he goes. Uh, a three is not a four plus, so that is a miss. He shoots and misses. Wow. wow. All right, onto All right, some the goblins. The goblins find themselves in a bit of an interesting predicament, right? So, this is where the fun part of wargaming is, right? <laughs> is these, these kinds of tricky situations. So... They have their archers, who are in a pretty good spot, 
because the archers can reach... Whoa, don't mind me bashing the trees. The archers can reach pretty far. But as you can see, so far, the dwarvies are kind of not in their line of fire. So we have to decide, do we want to move these archers closer or leave them sort of force projecting? My phone's going off in the other room. I don't know if you can hear it. I'm on I'm on, on fire. Um, or, in, or, like, what do we do with these guys? Do we charge them all the way in? Or do we, um, you know, kind of keep them back a bit so that they, you know, if they do get someone charged in, they can, they can be shot at. You know what I mean? Uh, so, it's a bit of a, bit of a conundrum. I think we're definitely going to activate these guys. And I think, yeah, I think we're going to position them so they're making a threat on this, um, on the, on the portal there. But, um, you know, still within range of their friends. You know, that's the, that's the secret, I think. Because they can shoot halfway out that portal. So we need the dwarves to come closer to us. We've got to try and sucker them in, <laughs> as it were. <laughs> so, um, that will only leave the goblins with the archers to activate next. Meanwhile, we have a marksman. And a miner. And I'm pretty sure a king, right? He hasn't had his turn yet. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. What am I going to do? Oh, did I just move them in range of... Oops. Whoopsie. That was a mistake. <laughs> um. Oh, he can see them too. Okay. Well, I think I know what's happening now. Whoops. <laughs> Whilst I'm so busy playing the goblin, because, like, deep down in my heart, I am a goblin, right? Like, I, I'm on Team Goblin here, and I think they're about to lose. <laughs> um, whilst playing the goblins, I have not um, taken into account that the dwarves are lying in wait. So, um, giving them the perfect opportunity to nuke these guys with their marksmen. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Well, this is how war works, right? Bad things happen. So, the marksman's going to take a shot. As we know, he's quality 4. He's got an 18-inch. He's AP1 as well. Don't forget that. Uh, which I think we did forget last game. But what are you going to do? Um, so, he's going to have a crack at that now. So, he's 4 plus the hit. But we said these are cover, right? So, they are going through some cover. So, he's going to be 5 plus to hit um, these, these little swamp goblins. And 3 is not five. So he shoots and misses. These dwarven marksmen, man, they're not they're not doing well today. They're not good with the bright lights <laughs> for a change. <laughs> so uh, then that's the archers, and the archers have no one to shoot, I don't think. Can they reach this guy? No. So the archers activate. They've got nothing, uh, which leaves a miner who will get the miner to charge up. Um, he's eight, and... Oh, yeah, he's just going to run. He's not going to try and blow up any... Whoops, don't mind me. Not even showing you what I'm doing. He's not even going to try any shenanigans. Uh, and then the king. Now, I don't know. There's no, like, alternative activation type deals. Uh, like, so in Kill Team, you get, like, Overwatch and, you know, that kind of stuff where you can react, I guess, if there's extra activations happening. But um, it seems not. The king, what's the king going to do? Let's find out. How can the king not charge the troll? You know what I mean? He's got to defend his man. He's got a fallen man here. He's got a fallen body to protect. So he's going to um, have at the troll, I guess. He's a quality three. Fearless hero. Uh, and he's got three attacks because he's got a heavy hand weapon. He's got the same weapon that the troll does, which is pretty cool uh, in theory. So let's um let's have a heroic heroic uh fight between the king and the troll. Uh what did I say he needed three plus? Here we go, Kachow. Oh man. That's why he's the king. <laughs> Two hits, one miss. Uh the troll has defense. 
Uh, AP1, though, so the troll's defense, we said, was 4+, plus, so he has a 5+, plus to defend. He makes one of those, which is good, but the one he doesn't make, he's going to regenerate 5+. Plus. And he didn't make it! He goes up to two wounds. How very rude. And uh, then they, they separate, I guess. That's how that works. Uh, fighting back. Hmm. Can he fight back in this instance? See, this is very confusing where it's like uh, this thing. Return strikes. Once all charging models were able to attack have done so, the defending model may choose to strike. Yeah, you know what? He will choose to strike because why wouldn't he? <laughs> He's got uh, three. He's got three. Uh, and they're sixes because he's fatigued. He's already attacked, right? Oh, but he gets one in. That's nice. The king's defense is four plus. Oh, wait. It's uh, five plus because the weapon is AP1. Whoa. That dice went walkabout. Come back. Dragon ate my dice. Oh, the king defends. The king defends. How can you fight a king, trolley boy? How can you fight a king? So the king will waddle back. And that'll be the end of turn two. And that's the state of play. Hmm. Now, stunned models cannot contest um, the... Oh, let's move that back a bit. Stunned models cannot contest the that thing. The objectives. You know, the words I'm looking for. So, guys, I'm really bad with words. And I'm pretty tired today. <laughs> uh, so, uh, our goblins have taken... We've seized control of the portal. The dwarves had the control. Now the goblins have taken control. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, maybe these miners are fast enough to sneak in. Uh, their plan with trying to take down the troll didn't really work because the troll activated first. Mostly because the goblins had a strategy. But you know what? That's how it would go in a real game, too. Like... If I was playing the dwarves, I wouldn't know that the goblins were going to try and spell bomb me. There you go. So there we go. Turn two finished. On to turn three. Turn three! Here's what the board looks like. If I can get the board in the shot. Get my lighting cable out of the way. <laughs> so yeah. Um, the goblins finished activating first, so they have to activate first again. Uh, and we'll... Pick a goblin to activate. Oh, the king goes up. We'll, we'll fix all these. The king gets magic points. The shaman gets magic points. And we'll see what happens next. Okay. The goblin's turn. The leader, the shaman, is going to spend his two points to cast Nuisance. And he can do that on... Target four friendly units within 12 inches to get plus one to defense rolls next time they hit. So we're going to go those three guys. Is he within 12? Oh, he's just out. That's a bit frustrating. I could move. I might do that. I'm going to move and cast it. We're going to move up behind the portal. <laughs> and uh, he'll cast that to the troll as well. So, well, well, let's see. He may cast it. He may not. So, I need a 4 plus to make this happen. Where's a good spot to roll this? Let's try rolling in front of there. 5 is more than 4! Yay! Simple numbers. We did it, Reddit. So, these guys have a plus 1 to their defense, and he has a plus 1 to his defense. Is that right? Plus 1? Minus 1. Whatever. Their rolls get a plus 1, is how it's worded, if that matters at all. I've got him in the shadow. He looks... You know, creepy. That's bad. That's bad camera manning, but what are you going to do? So that is his activation. Who's going to activate next? Hmm. Okay, we've got some miners to activate. And um, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> uh, they are going to... I think their best bet is to try and use their bombs. Um, you know, use what you've got. They've only got little legs. So we'll activate this one guy. Four. Will that put him close enough? Yes, he's within 12. So he is going to chuck an explosive at the troll. He gets... It's only one attack, but it is AP1. Quality four. Here we go. We need a four. That is a six. One day I'll roll on camera. Today is not that day. <laughs> now, the troll has a plus one to his defense rolls. He's got a 
I keep forgetting. A plus four defense, so we need three plus, but it's AP one, so we need four plus. So the AP counters out. Here we go. ka -chow. Oh! That's... That smarts. <laughs> if he didn't have the, um, you know, if he didn't, you know, he almost made it. <laughs> Regeneration 5+. plus. <gasps> the troll takes a third wound. Now, that puts him on three wounds. Is, is. So, he needs to roll a dice and get less than a six, right? Is that right? Yes. It's his last wound. So, um... I guess. So what, what does he need? Three. He needs to get a two or less. Come on, where's that two when you need it? Oh, guess what? Duke. It was a two! He is not dead. He is just stunned. Big stunned Zorak. <laughs> ouch. Ouchie, ouch, ouch, ouch. Now that's actually quite bad for him because... I think the other guy is in charge range, but it doesn't matter whether you're in charge range or shooting range. If it hits, you're, you're, you're toast. Yeah. He's in charge range, my friends. I think Zorak the Troll is about to be dead. Oh, no, not Zorak the Troll. Seeing their friend be maligned. I might move that back even more if I can. There we go. That's a good shot. Seeing their friend be maligned, these guys might have a crack. And they do, they do. They are within 18. All three of them are going to be able to take a pot shot at the last dwarf. So they might be able to save that, save their buddy Zorak. Um, they have three attacks. Well, one, one attack each, and there's three of them. And they are quality five. So we're looking for five plus here. Five plus. Where's a good spot to roll? That looks like a good spot to roll. <gasps> it's a six. So we got one hit. We only need one. The um, miner has a defense of. Sorry, I'm just having a look here. Miner has a defense of 5 plus. So he needs a 5. Oh, uh, actually, wait a minute. That doesn't matter because we're 6. Uh, it, they needed 6s to hit anyway because of the minus 1 because of the cover. That is what we were going to say. But yes, he has a. What did I say? 5 plus defense. 5 plus defense. Three is not five. He takes a wound. Uh, and that means he... We've got a one. Plus... Um, so we need to get... What is it? You need to get... Uh, if I get a five or less, he's okay. <gasps> Look at that. The dice are coming up the goblin's way. He is dead. D-E-D -E -D dead. Pew pew. There you go. That archer, man. He, he's earned his stripes. <laughs> Saved Zorak's life. Literally. The bad moon uh, watches over him. <laughs> uh, now we have a, a, a dwarf turn. Now then, our dwarves. We have some options. We have marksmen's. We have this dwarf that can activate and remove his stun. Uh, I believe that is how that works. That's what I seemed to read in the rules, was that you spend a turn doing nothing and you remove the stun. That's how you get rid of it. But he'll still have his one wound, so um, good to know. And then uh, the king hasn't activated yet, right? So we could just go and curb stomp Zorak with the king, or we could shoot him with a marksman, or we could do something else. Um, let me know what you'd do in the comments below. Do we prioritize getting rid of Zorak? I think we do. Uh, and that is definitely what I'm going to do. But I'm going to do it with the Marksman first. Oh. Now this is... Okay, so this is tricky, right? So if I move the king... He's definitely moving away from... The objective, right? Will he have enough to get back in time? Because we're on turn three. So... In theory, he can come back, but he won't have time to really fight anyone back there. And he definitely can't reach these guys if he comes back. So if he goes to deal with Zorak, then he is basically out of the fight for this. Can this miner get in? That miner... He also will only just be able to... Like, it's really the king and this wounded guy... 
are the only ones that can save the day. Right? Like, if you think about this, they're, they're gonna summon a big evil through the portal. Oh, this is... See, now this is, this is why I like gaming like this, right? I know people... You know, oh, you nerd, you're playing by yourself, you big loser. Uh, but this is it, right? Like, this, there's, there's, if you're playing with someone else, you, you know, you're just gonna, you're not gonna waste all this time. You're gonna kind of really get into it. But I think this is, you know, this is what the Joy of Wargaming was talking about the other day. When you have this alternating activation, you've got all these things to consider. And I think that t- turn limit of four turns is really key as well. Um, you know, like we, law wise, we've got these goblins, they're gonna summon a big monster, they're gonna, you know, get a friend to help them, and this king has to decide, you know, who, who can we send? Because if he goes, we might have to put the dwarf in charge of it, but Zorak's gonna activate and remove that, which he probably could have done already. Hmm, the marksman. Will the marksman be able to hit as well? And also, we need to get rid of these guys, right? Like, we've got three bodies. We've got an uninjured shaman. There's a lot of uh, wounds here. You know what I mean? There's a lot of wounds being taken, um, you know, that are holding this, holding this, uh, this, this objective. Uh, and they need to deal those wounds. Zorak might get... Like, what threat does Zorak pose? Like, he looks very scary, right? He's very good force projection in terms of strategy because he draws attention to himself. But the dwarf player, i.e. me at the moment, uh, you know, like, has to weigh this up. Like, is he as big a threat as he looks? He's only got one hit point. He's kind of being whittled away by these miners. This miner at the back here... Um, and so the sniper archer removing that, that one miner has kind of shifted the balance of, of this, this scenario. I think the king has to, the king and the marksman both have to kind of focus fire and get rid of these guys. Cause if they do not, uh, there is no chance for them to win, right? Especially when you consider like this game, it's not just getting that wound. You have to get that wound plus them not be stunned, right? Like, the stunned means they don't hold the objective, I guess, but, like, they're they're still around in theory. So anyone stunned this turn will be holding an objective at the end of next turn. You know what I mean? So, like, because they will activate and do nothing unless they are killed in that next turn. And at the moment, they're not... Like, they need... They need to put all their attacks onto pressing this. So, with that in mind, I think we're going to activate this marksman. Is he in range of these guys? He sure is. He is going to take a shot, trying to whittle down their forces a bit. And I think Zorak is going to get to, you know, a second chance. At least he'll get to the end of next turn um, and, and not be dead. Quality four... Minus one because of the uh, the swamp. I know there's no trees here, but we said it's a it's a cover. Uh, you know, it's providing cover. There is trees, just you know, not not present visually. Um, and so we quality four means he's hitting on fives, and he's got one shot. Here we go, and it's a six. He hits. Uh, defense of the goblin. Ooh, now the defense. He's still got the spell. He's still got the spell. The nuisance spell. He's a nuisance. Uh, so he's got a 6 plus defense. In this case, it's going to be a 5 plus. Oh, wait, but the rifle is AP1. Oh, man, that rifle is saving the day. So he, he still has a 6 plus. <gasps> it's not a 6. Okay, he's dead. He dead. <laughs> All right. Um, goblin activations. Is that it? I think everyone's activated except Zorak, maybe. He did his spell and moved up. They did the shooting. Oh, the warriors can do a thing. He's going to activate and not be stunned anymore at the end of the turn. But he can't do anything else. And then it's back to the dwarves. Whilst we're here, might as well do it again. Uh, they're going to take a shot to try and whittle away these uh, these dudes. Here we go. Uh, five. Now he doesn't have the um, he doesn't have the the cover either. So that's a hit. Uh, so uh, six defense. 
that's not a six. We lose another guy. We'll take we'll take the one from the back there. Oh, okay. And then uh, that's all the goblins' activations. And so the king... Did the king activate this turn? He's the one that killed... Is he the one that knocked Zorak out? Was that last turn? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe all that pondering was for nothing. <laughs> we still have the dwarf to activate. We can activate the dwarf and he can remove his stunned status. Uh, so he is now uh, contesting that. And I'm going to quickly review the camera and work out if the king activated already this turn. All right, yeah, the leader, that fight was last turn. So the leader does still have to activate, and he is going to do so by uh, charging the shaman. I'm going to have this, uh, this battle framed by the... <laughs> framed by the... By the, the ruins. <laughs> there you go. What a, what a cinematic... Oh, wonky cam... There we go. Cinematic little battle there. Uh, he is going to charge and fight the Shaman. Uh, and we are going... Now, the Shaman didn't put the... He had... I, I, I did four dudes instead of four units, right? Like, technically, they count as one unit, those warriors. But I did four dudes instead of four units. Uh, and so the Shaman doesn't have the nuisance spell on him, right? That's kind of how I ruled it when I did it. And so that's how it is now. Uh, the king has three attacks, AP1. He also has a spell. Ooh. Alright, he's going to... Before he moves... Hmm... Before he moves, he's going to use those three of his four. Oh, actually, can you do that within 12? Where he was before. Ah, uh, he can't do that. Look at that. See, that's why it's important. And six takes two. Okay, he is going to run up. And then he's going to cast his spell. I guess he can still cast the same spell. Because he moved. Alright, so... Can you cast a spell and charge? Hmm. Can you cast a spell and charge? Spells. Yeah, because it's a... It's a special ability. It's not like a whole phase or anything in this game, is it? At any point before attacking. Can spend as many... Yeah, so he hasn't attacked yet. So that counts as now. So he's going to cast Cleaving Rune. Target two enemy units within 12 inches. Take two hits. So he's going to target, obviously, the, the Shaman. And he's going to target this guy. And so he needs a uh, 4 plus to hit. You know what? He's going to spend that last one to give him a 3 plus. To try and make that definitely work. Because he really wants that to work. Alright, so they take two hits each they are i'm guessing it's just his normal hits right like it doesn't really say what a hit counts as on the sheet so i'm assuming it's just whatever damage he does so he does uh attack three ap1 so you know obviously it's two hits ap1 so we'll do the shaman first the shaman is gonna he has a defense of five plus so he needs five pluses on each of these. He does not get either of them. So that is now two wounds to him. I'll get another dice out. I'll just use this d20. So he's got two wounds on him. I'm going to put it here so we kind of can see it. Oh, not 12 wounds, two. There you go. And this guy uh, normally would have six plus, but he has the bonus one and then minus the one. Oh, he needed sixes anyway because he was a king. Anyway, so he needs sixes too. Well, he gets one six, but one is uh, not a six, right? So he takes a wound. Um, and we get to get another kind of dice for wounds. All right, now he needs to make a roll of not being the dead guy. Um, which he... So with one wound, he just needs the six, right? Ah, oh, the six plus one is seven. It kills him. The king... Coming, coming in strong, using his magic. 
Wow. <laughs> and then he gets to attack as well, right? <laughs> so, um, he's got three. AP one. Here we go. He's, we said he's a three plus attack as well. Uh, and that's two hits. The Goblin Shaman with a five plus defense. Normally, AP one means it's going to be uh, sixes. No, no bueno. So he takes two wounds. So that is enough to kill him, right? Like he would be on one wound and then roll his, like, do I fall down and die roll? And then he takes another wound. So he's like, is that how that works? I think so. I'm getting a phone call. All right, I've moved the, the portal out of the way for a second so we can see what's going on. So I'm just going to read this rule here. So, uh, you know, you roll to hit, you roll to block, which we did not, and then we check wound effects. If the target has taken at least one wound, roll one die and add the number of wound markers to it to see what happens to the target. And then it works if it's, you know, stunned or knocked out. So I'm guessing the way that it works is even though he's lost more wounds than he has, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> This seems a bit of a confusing situation. He's lost more wins than he has. Um, but uh, I guess we... So he will have four. And then I, I guess you just keep racking up wins, right? Until, you know, you have no more win markers left. So we're going to roll one dice. Uh, we need to get a two or less. That is not less than two. So it's a moot point anyway. He's D-E-D -E dead. Uh, there we go. Uh, and that means we can put that back there. Always well, technically there. Uh, and... Gee whiz. That doesn't leave a lot of goblins left on the field, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta fix that up where it was. Uh, yeah. Um, hmm. <laughs> end of turn three, I guess, question mark? No, it's not the end of the round. We have to take some quality tests. Morale tests. Yay, morale. Um, we're going to start with the, uh, the, the, these guys here. So they've just watched their leader, though they had some triumphs themselves, they have just watched their leader get murdered. They also watched, like, half the army get murdered. <laughs> so they are down to half their, half their army or less. So if they take the test and fail, uh, it routes. Routed units have lost all hope and are taken captive. Flee the battle or otherwise... Rendered ineffective. So, we need to make a test. These goblins have a test of... 6 plus... What? 6 plus? That's a defense. 5 plus. 5 plus for their morale. Here we go. They got a 2. They flee like the chicken goblins that they are into the ruins. Let's also take a test for... Oh, am I too far away? Let's also take a test for Zorak. Zorak is pretty badly wounded. Uh, he has a quality of 4+. plus. Let's see if he routes as well. He does not route. He is okay. Um, but I think it's safe to concede that he is, you know, going to die. So I think the dwarves have won this game with a turn to spare. They destroy the portal and the uh, goblin leader with it. But now they are stuck in the swamp and we'll have to... Uh, get out but that is a battle for another day thank you so much for watching me play with my dollies uh i appreciate you coming along and seeing it if you do and uh i hope you had as good a time as i did and had some fun and definitely i'm glad we had that little ponderance about the you know because that changed the way that we approached this battle and it definitely meant that the dwarves focused on what they were meant to do instead of getting distracted and that king really turned the tide of battle so happy days uh, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now.